Hey guys, you know who I am, Kevin Grace, and you know what this is, The Grace Period. The Grace Period is where I rant and rave, investigate, inform, educate, and entertain you about different topics happening in the world today. Well, today we're going to talk about some of the shenanigans happening down in the Tennessee State House. Recently, you remember the two black Democratic politicians that were... Uh, expelled by the rest of the legislature down there because they had commandeered the uh, session by getting on a bullhorn and talking about gun rights and gun support and uh, all that type of stuff. Actually, it was two out of the three politicians that were kicked out. The two that were kicked out happened to be black and they were Democrats. The other woman was a white woman that was a Democrat. She wasn't. And of course, there was a big backlash and outcry, but they were reinstated. Fast forward to now, I guess the universe is realigning itself. There's a politician there named Scotty Campbell. He was being investigated about sexual harassment. Check out this clip. As the legislative session wraps up, Representative Scotty Campbell's desk inside of the House chambers was empty Thursday afternoon. We received uh, Representative Campbell's letter of resignation uh, today, you know, at around two o'clock, and, and we, we accepted that resignation. But as far as the details of that, I actually, uh, along with the other members of the body, became aware of that. When, when the public became aware. At the end of March of this year, the House Workplace Discrimination and Harassment Subcommittee launched an ethics investigation after receiving a complaint regarding Republican Representative Scotty Campbell from Johnson County. Lawmakers tell WSMV4 he was allegedly sexually harassing a Capitol intern. So the Speaker of the House was a part of a cover-up. Democratic House Representative Justin Jones, who's been at the forefront of passing common sense gun legislation and was recently reinstated after he, along with Justin J. Pearson, was expelled, believes House Speaker Cameron Sexton knew about these allegations. Again, you know, that he put the, the protecting this, this lawmaker over the well-being of these, of these interns. Um, who should be, you know, who should be protected, who, who were courageous to come forward. Um, but it's very unfortunate that it took this point in just the second to last day of session for them to finally do something, but only because it was brought up in the news today. Speaker Sexton, can you talk about the resignation of Representative Campbell today? Any comment on that, sir? I caught up with the Speaker of the House, Cameron Sexton, after session. Sexton denies he knew about Campbell's allegations, even though the subcommittee, which is bipartisan, sent him a letter on March 29th. He explains how the process that was implemented by the General Assembly in 2016 works. They have to determine first if they think there's a violation. If they do, then they can talk to witnesses, they can talk to members, they can talk to the victim, they can do the investigation, and then they decide what corrective action should be taken. At that point, the speaker does not know any of the details uh, before or after, other than that a complaint has been filed. Um, and that a member is involved because that's where it would go if it was a member. This is the memorandum that was addressed to the House Speaker, but it doesn't give any details on the complaint. But the subcommittee did agree Campbell did violate the policy. This should concern all Tennesseans, regardless of Republican, Democrat, Independent. We want our interns to feel safer. We want our children to feel safer. That's why we're talking about common sense gun laws. But again, they put power over all else. So let's see what happens when the cameras catch up to them and they ask exactly for his side of the story. And I'm Carrie Sharp. And I'm Vicki Yates. Representative Scotty Campbell was among those who recently voted to expel the Tennessee Three, but it turns out Campbell and the GOP had their own secrets. As our Phil Williams discovered, Campbell had quietly been found guilty of sexually harassing legislative interns, but nothing had happened, Phil, until today. That's right. We discovered that the East Tennessee Republican had been found guilty in that secret process of sexually harassing the college interns accused of some extremely vulgar, vulgar behavior. But Campbell didn't lose his leadership post in the Republican caucus nor his committee seats. That all changed within hours after we confronted him this morning. Hey, Representative Campbell, how are you, sir? 
We wanted to give the East Tennessee Republican a chance to respond to the findings of our latest investigation of Tennessee's Capitol Hill. Uh, as I understand, you admitted to sexually harassing this intern. Give me just five seconds. Okay. Okay. In fact, Scotty Campbell already knew we were investigating some serious allegations. Hold on just a second about his relationship with at least one legislative intern, although he would soon divulge there was a second intern. Which direction do I need to look for your camera? D d just look at so me. Sure. Campbell is vice chair of the House Republican Caucus, and when three Democrats engaged in a gun violence protest on the House floor, he voted to expel all three. Yet this memo obtained by News Channel 5 Investigates shows a secret ethics panel recently concluded that based on a staff investigation, the ethics subcommittee finds that Representative Campbell violated the legislature's sexual harassment policy. I had consensual adult conversations with two adults off off property. One doesn't get uh, written up for consensual conversations. The, the letter says that you were guilty of violating the harassment policy. Uh, I think conversations are consensual once that's verbally agreed to. And if I choose to talk to any intern in the future, it will be recorded. One of the interns had an apartment in Capitol Towers, a condo apartment complex next to the Capitol where Campbell also had a place. The Republican lawmaker allegedly saw her and a 19-year-old intern going into her apartment. According to an account the victim sent to her university, Campbell made comments about how he was in his apartment imagining that we were performing sexual acts on one another and how it drove him crazy knowing that was happening so close to him. The woman and added, I uncomfortably explained that that was not happening and he insisted that he knew it was and asked me to tell him about it. She continued, I explained that she is my friend and he proceeded to describe how sexually attractive he finds her, referring to the 19-year-old intern. You were in your apartment imagining that they were performing sexual acts on one another? That's not true. So, so she's just making that up? Yes. On another occasion, the woman says she went to Campbell's apartment to return a wrench she had borrowed. Quote, he proceeded to ask how many men I've slept with. She recalled, I told him zero and he insisted I was lying and told me not to lie. He then proceeded to ask how many women I've slept with and said he bets girls go crazy over me. You uh, asked her about how many men she had slept with and then asked about how many women she had slept with? No. So, so you're saying she just she's just making all of this up? I'm saying that we had a, cons a consensual adult conversation. Then, according to the woman's account, the Republican leader offered cannabis gummies if she would show him tattoos and piercings on her body. He denies it. Her story, I told him absolutely not, and he begged me for several hugs. She says, I was getting progressively more afraid and uncomfortable. He then reached out his hand towards me and grabbed me around my neck. I recoiled and said I felt sick and immediately left. Again, Campbell says he didn't think he did anything wrong. I was told that if anything ever crossed the line, they would tell me directly. And I'm hearing it from Phil. But remember the report from the ethics panel finding that Campbell had indeed violated the harassment policy. So are you saying the ethics subcommittee is lying? I'm saying that I did not know that a workplace policy could be enforced when you're not at work. But News Channel 5 Investigates has learned that legislative officials took the complaints against Campbell so seriously that they've now spent thousands of dollars to get the intern out of her lease at Capitol Towers, to move her furniture back home, and to put her up in a downtown hotel until her internship is done. As for how Campbell thinks his vote to expel the Tennessee Three squares with his own behavior. They broke the house rules of decorum. And you broke the, the house policies regarding sexual harassment, according to this letter. I had a consensual conversation with adults. And when the adults informed me that we could talk and that there weren't guardrails, I talked to who I thought were my friends. Friends whose definition of friendship appears to be far different from this Republican's idea of what it means to be a friend. Again, Representative Campbell resigned about six hours after we confronted him with those allegations. Still, there are lots of questions that are not answered. 
Why did Speaker Sexton and other Republican leaders not act more decisively? And how much is this costing taxpayers? Legislative officials say that number is confidential, but you can bet we're not done investigating. Vicki? <laughs> Looks like karma is a bitch. Definitely the universe is resetting itself. But uh, don't shed a tear over Scotty Campbell resigning. He's got other income coming in. He's a local radio show host. And uh, also he's a local uh, pro wrestling promoter at a uh, regional wrestling organization he has called Beside the Ring. So... Uh, he won't be going totally broke. But uh, if you like this video, please subscribe down below and feel free to leave any comments about Scotty Campbell.